In this video, we're going to talk about order of operations. You might have heard about PEMDAS back in the day, but we're going to quickly go over those again. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Remember that multiplication and division are essentially of equal rank or ranking, but you have to go from left to right. And that is the same thing with addition and subtraction. You go from left to right. You basically treat the items on the left before the items on the right on using that basic operation. So, for example, if someone were to ask you 2 plus 3 minus 2, you technically would go 2 plus 3 first, and then you do minus 2. So, in this case, you have 5 minus 2, and that's 3. It's nice to show your work every step of the way. That's very important. So, make sure you show your work, and then you would be less likely to make any sort of errors. Now, let's go ahead and look at a few things or a few examples using PEMDAS from 1.5, order of operations. So let's look at our example here, 5 plus 2 times 8. Well, remember, according to PEMDAS, we have to basically do the 2 times 8 first because multiplication comes before uh, multiplication comes before addition. So this case would be 5 plus 16. And the answer is 21. So this is number two that we've just looked at. Let's look at number four. 37 minus 3 times 7. Again, you take care of the multiplication first. So we have 37 minus 21. And that leaves you with 16. So again, we go multiplication before we do any other operation. Now I'm going to take us to another um, section. And we'll try more practice problems. Number 14, what is 20 divided by 1 times 4? So 20 divided by 1 times 4. Now keep in mind that when you see a decimal point, it represents a multiplication. Well, it's not a decimal point, but when you see this point that looks like a decimal point, you're talking about multiplication. And so you have 20 divided by 1 times 4. Remember, you go from left to right for multiplication and division. And so that becomes 20 times 4 because 20 divided by 1 is just 20. And so now we have the answer being 80. So that's another example for you to look at. Let us move on to number 24. Let's look at a longer problem, which is 14 times 18 plus 9 divided by 3 minus 7 times 13. So we have to take these step by step. First of all, we have to deal with the multiplication here. And then you need to know that we have to deal with that next instead of any sort of addition. And then we deal with that separately. So why don't we go ahead and start with the first part, which is 14 times 18. That is 252. You can use your multiplication like that to do your work. You get 252 plus 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then you do 7 times 13, which is just, again, you take you start from 84, you add 7, because you know what 7 times 12 is, and that is 91. So 252 plus 3 is 255, and then you subtract from 91. So you just say 255 minus 91, and that is going to be your final answer. In this case, it's 164. Again, you use your subtraction skills. You just subtract and you get 164. So that's another example that deals with order of operations. Let's take a few more examples so that we make sure we really understand the concept. So I'm uh, moving on to number, let's see a good one here, number 30. So let's take number 30. But 30 says 10 plus 20 and then divided by 2 plus 2. So when we have 10 plus 20 divided by 2 plus 2, we know that this part here is just waiting for what's going to happen. This, this whole thing here has to interact before this 10 can add to it. So first of all, let's take care of the parentheses. This is a sort of a parentheses or bracket, actually. This is like a bracket, and then you have your parentheses. But the principle is the same. Take care of that, those, that 2 plus 2, which is 4. So then you have 20 divided by 4, right? And then the 10 plus is waiting. This comes first. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. So 10 plus 5 is 15. So that's how we deal with that part of the problem. So we have, and then we had 10 plus 5, which was equal to 15. 
So that takes us to the end of that problem. Let's look at number 38. In number 38, we have 4 times and then 8 plus 7 divided by 3. So we have to deal with what's in that bracket there, 8 plus 7, and that's 15. And you have 4 times that and then divided by 3. 4 times 15 is 60, divided by 3, you have 20. And that's the answer to that problem. So, more practice with PEMDAS. Let's look at the next section. Let's pick out two problems there. Number 42. So we have 6 plus 3 times 4 plus 4 and then times 5 plus 8. In this problem, we have to deal with things in the very, uh, in, the, in the parentheses inside the bracket. So we have 5 plus 8. We have 13 waiting over there. You have 4 plus 4 times that 13. So this 4 times the 13 will interact first, and then we'll work our way out outward. So 4 times 13, so you have 52. So 4 plus 52 inside, and then you have 6 times 3. So 4 plus 52 is 56. Now, in this case, where you have 6 times 3, and then you have times 56, so we, we go back and we do a quick recap. We had 5 plus 8, which was 13. And then we had 4 plus 4, but we can't do anything here because this 4 over here, this 4 over here is going to interact with this first. So that's how we got these two to interact to give us the 52. This 4 over here is waiting, just waiting. And then finally, after all these other operations finished, the 4 was able to add to 52. Then we had 6 times 3 waiting out here too. So we have 6 times 3 waiting. And in that case, we have 6 times 3 times 56. Now remember the commutative property of multiplication. You can multiply those in any order, but it makes sense to just go from left to right. So you have 6 times 3 times 56. Um, the answer is 1,008. I apologize, this is actually not 6 times 3, this is 6 plus 3 back up here. So I wrote the problem wrong coming down, I apologize. So that would actually be 6 plus 3 times 56. So you would do 56 times 3, and then you add 6 to it. So it would be 6 plus 168, and that would be your final answer, which is 174. For number 44, we have basically 4 plus 9 going into 7 plus 6 and then 3 plus 3. The 3 plus 3 will add right away. That is, again, your order of operations, parentheses first. So you have a 6 out here, and then you have 7 plus 6 waiting out there. These two will interact, 6 times 6. So for the 6 times 6, we know that's 36. And so 7 plus 36 now is what's in there. And then we have 4 plus 9 waiting. Again, because of order of operation, we have to take care of this part. We get 43. And so we have 4 plus 9. We have 4 plus 9 and into 43. So 9 times 43. We don't expect you to know that off the top of your head, but you should be able to um, multiply it out. 43 times 9. And so 43 times 9 is just basically 430 minus 43. So think about it this way. 430 times or uh, 43 times 10 which is 430, and you just subtract 43 from it, and that will give you the answer that you need. So 43 plus times 9, as I said, is 387. So you have 4 plus 387, and your final answer is 391. So that's another example with order of operations. Let's take a turn now to one more problem from this section, number 54. For number 54... So for number 54, you have 2 and then going into what you see times 4 and so on and so forth. So we go step by step. You see this 6 plus 9 and this 3 plus 4. We know that needs to be taken care of right away. So you just update those. You bring down the 4. You bring down minus 2. Everything else there is staying the same. So we have 4 times 15 minus 2 times 7. And you have a 2 that is waiting outside for whatever the outcome is. So then 2 times 7 we know is 14. 4 times 15 is 60. So you have 60 minus 14, again, with a 2 waiting outside. 60 minus 14 is the next thing that needs to be done. So you have 46, 2 times 46, and you have your final answer as 92. So step by step, 
we take care of what's inside and we work our way one step by step again we took care of things um with the six plus nine and the three plus four we can do those independently of course they're two different parentheses essentially and then you added you did that and then you allow that to interact with the number multiplying and then you have those and then you went ahead and kept the two ready for after you simplified 60 minus 14 and then you get your final answer which is 92. very good let's take another example from this section uh from the next section sorry which would be number 58. so for number 58 we have 5 minus 3 and then to the fourth power remember it's parentheses exponents multiplication division addition and subtraction in this case we only have a parentheses and a power issue so 5 minus 3 is 2 and then you have the fourth power waiting 2 to the fourth power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which is equal to 16 because 2 times 2 is 4 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 times 2 is 16 so that's how you get the answer you need uh, for 5 minus 3 raised to the fourth power let's try number 66 so number 66 we have another example, 6 times 3 squared plus 7 times 5 plus 12. Again, we do parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division. So there's exponents waiting right there. So 3 squared is 9. So 6 times 9 plus there's multiplication going on there. And so that becomes 35 and then plus 12. According to the order of operations, the first thing that we need to take care of now is 6 times 9. 6 times 9, of course, is 54 so we bring that 54 down plus 35 plus 12 according to the commutative property of addition you could technically add those in any order that you want but we'll just go ahead and ha add them from left to right which will give us 101 when we add these together in pre-algebra generally you will not be using your calculator as much and so generally we want you to really strengthen your mental math strengthen your number sense and so you will technically in a sense take the two numbers together and you add them and then you add the 12 so you will do it manually um, that's something i want to encourage you to do when you get into algebra we can allow you to use that calculator more but generally we won't be using the calculator as much in pre-algebra just because i want to make sure that you're solid uh, in, in your number sense and understanding how to work with numbers in different situations. That was number 50. So we've done number 58 and number 66. Um, let's take another example like number 70, which is 3 cubed minus 7 plus 6. So in this case, we do 3 cubed, which is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And we do this independently. 7 plus 6, which is 13. Now, notice that the 3 cubed was separate from the 7 plus 6. Two different things, but of course, parentheses and exponents happen at the same time. I mean, parentheses happens first, but this happening did not affect what I was doing on the left over here, if that makes sense. So, the other way you could have done this is written it as 3 cubed minus, and then you do your 13 first, and that's fine. And then you have 27 minus 13. Either ways, the answer is 14 as the final answer. So, that was number 70. Um, your book gives you more practice problems. Let's look at number 80. Hopefully these will help you as you work through, uh, these should help you as you work through each of the problems that were assigned for this section. So number 80, you're doing the odd problems. I'm just picking out the even problems. So then we have 10, 10 plus, again, the 11 will be waiting there. The 20 will be waiting. 2 squared we have is 4 and then plus 1. So then we continue step by step. We'll deal with this. So 20 minus 5 with the 11 waiting and then 10 plus 11 into 20 minus 5. T 10 plus 11 into 15 waiting. So that's 10 plus 11 times 15. So 11 times 15. By the way, when you multiply a number by 11, generally when those two numbers don't add up to uh, a, a tens something in a tens place for example you can just add the digits together and put your answer in between so it's 165 so notice you add 1 plus 5 that's 6 and that goes right between the 1 and the 5 so 165 so that's a quick way to know how to multiply things by 11 so 10 ta 11 times 15 is 165 and then we basically go ahead and say 10 plus uh, 165 and that gives you 175 as your answer. So that's how you deal with that problem. That was number 80. 
dealing with order of operations still. So let's we're going to take a turn now to a few more problems that look a little different but are following the same principle. I'll go ahead and pick out two problems and write them on the next page and we'll continue. So for number 82, we have 35 plus 28 and then divided by 7 times 3 in the denominator. We take care of that, 35 plus 28, and we take care of that independently. 35 plus 28 uh, will be taken care of, and then we go to divide that by 21. So 63 divided by 21 is 3, of course. But notice that we have a division here. We take care of what's up here, and we take care of what's down there. That's very important. Now, moving on to this problem, we have a similar situation. We have a numerator and we have a denominator. In the denominator, you have 5 times 4 minus 5. That's going to be critical to remember your PEMDAS. In the numerator, you have a similar situation. When you do the 8 times 6 before you do minus 3. 8 times 6, we have 48 minus 3. And then you have 60 minus that. So 48 minus 3 is 45. So 60 minus 45 divided by 5 times 4, which is 20 minus 5. 60 minus 45 is 15. 20 minus 5 is 15. 15 over 15 is 1. That's how we do number 92. So please remember, we start out with, um, in number 82, we took care of the numerator first, and we divided that by 21. In 92, we took care of the numerator, and then the denominator eventually also using PEMDAS. The next page is going to look at another concept from this section called the distributive property. The distributive property basically deals with how we take something outside of parentheses and multiply it by, the e by each of the individual components in the parentheses. So we have A into B plus C. So in the, we're using the distributive property, you're basically taking something outside of parentheses and distributing it into each term. I think of it like people shaking hands. A is going to shake hands with each of the things inside the parentheses. In this case, we have 8 times into 4 plus 2. So 8 times 4 plus 8 times 2. That's what's going to happen over here. 8 times 4 plus 8 times 2. So 8 times 4 is 32 plus 8 times 2, which is 16. You add those two together and you get 48. So we've used the distributive property to simplify that problem. On the next problem, we have 4 into 9 plus 6. It will be 4 times 9 plus 4 times 6. So 4 times 9 plus 4 times 6. 4 times 9, of course, is 36. We add that to 4 times 6, which is 24. You add those two together and you get 60. So that's how we do that problem. So that's how we use the distributive, distributive property to do number 94 and number 100. Let's wrap up with one more concept or one more problem. What happens when they ask you to multiply 3 times 76? Well, that looks a little more complicated because 3 times 76 is not straightforward in that you would have to line it up like this. But what if you could take 76 and break it into two things like 70 and 6? And then you use the distributive property to basically get your answer. So you have 3 times 70, that's 210, and 3 times 6, so you have 3 times 70 plus 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. So you add it that way. So you do 3 times 70, which is 210, and 3 times 6, which is 18. Now you just add this down, and you have 228. That's one way that you could simplify problems if you don't want to do uh, long multiplication uh, you know problems you can sometimes break the number that the number is being multiplied and then distribute that will be one approach that will also give you the answer that you need thank you and have a wonderful day bye